What up, Tech of the Gamers? It's your boy Jermaine with Tech Toys and Gaming, and today I have yet another awesome addition to my microphone catalog reviews, and possibly in addition to your studio setup for gamers, for streamers, for podcasters, content creators, just like this. You clicked on the right video today because you've probably seen this online, but you probably haven't seen the way I've looked at it. And we're gonna look at it today together, you and I. And the product I am referring to is oh, the Mono PD 200X USB dynamic microphone. That's right, USB and XLR with a nice little taste of RGB. Techies and gamers, I have been waiting a little minute to get my hands on this device to review with all my techies and gamers out there looking to improve their sound. And I feel like this is somewhat the right balance of kind of what I like. I hope, right? Right now, this has become my favorite microphone. It's the Fifine K688, but this right here tends to be a direct competitor with this k688 it's not going to be a versus battle today but uh maybe in the future let me know in the comments let's get straight into this box and see what we get why i snapped i don't know it's just habit what All right, let's unbox it. I don't know why I flipped it either. It makes no sense. I do love the Mayono branding. I've always liked their branding. They have this matte finish with their products having this nice little sheen and reflective finish and their yellow and black theme as well. All right, so typical boxing. We have our little styrofoam cover and oh, we have our instructions and manual straight out the box. It's a little very thick here. We're not gonna use instruction because we've done 100 mic reviews and we're gonna just throw this over our shoulder like that. What? Looking at the way this comes packaged in your box, looks nice and sleek and it looks a little bit smaller than the K688. So let's get it out of its old house because this new house might be on this mount. We're gonna find out. And look at the beautiful glory of this uh, microphone. Oh, what is a little bit of weight on this, techies and gamers? Uh, why is that? Because the body, that's right, the body itself is metal with a nice mono branding there and a nice barcode there in case you like barcodes in your life. What? And the shock mount is plastic. The body is metal. The boom arm mount portion is also plastic. All right. And a nice cushion. Wow. Why is that so thick on the top there? Whoa, there's a lot of space. Let's see if that comes off. Ooh, and it comes off with a nice little click. There is a plastic base there that allows it to snap into place. And the cushion is, is pretty much even all around the board, but there is, it feels like there is space between the cushion here and the top of the capsule here. So there's a little bit of a gap. So there is some space in there to I guess, mitigate more plosives and more hisses. So, but looking at the capsule, it looks like there is a little bit of recess as far as like where the capsule is located. And the K688, the capsule itself is just ever so slightly closer to the front end of that grill. And the grill itself is metal. All right, and on the back, of course, you get your USB-C, XLR port and you get a monitoring port as well and you get yourself a little RGB monitoring uh mon RGB <laughs> comparing it to this microphone ever so slightly smaller it's about an inch and a half smaller in terms of like length we get a USB-C to USB-A and USB-C so it has the USB-A adapter on the front where you can just snap it off and then it can become USB-C to USB-C if you wanted to connect to like an Android device, an iPad, the newer iPads anyway, or your MacBook. So some versatility going on here. You have the 5 8 inch tread there that comes built into the mic. Nice little gold uh, copper looking thing interior. And then you have the 3 8 as well that comes in a little pouch. Other things come in this pouch too, what? So techies and gamers, this thing is looking very pretty to me in my eyes. I am really, really liking the way this thing appears on 
uh, this boom arm and on camera this looks very nice and professional oof gosh i gotta i feel like at the end of this video i'm going to have to make a decision and i really like this k688 mono pd 200x please don't be better what all right take us and gamers so here we are connected to our pd 200x microphone right here to my left and this is the audio quality coming straight out of box it seems like this is coming in just ever so subtly lower than the five fine k688 but the audio quality is impressive plosives peter piper picked the pepsi packed it into a popper i don't know what a popper is and poured it into a pitcher i said that all wrong god peter piper picked a pack of pepsis popped them and poured them into a pitcher how does that sound let me check some plosives, not really. I'm blowing into this and I have all my volumes maxed out. So I'm just giving the most extreme example. Of course, you're going to moderate your volumes and stuff like that. And you probably won't talk like that into it. But if you have it over to the side like that, you don't have to worry about your plosives because the air is not hitting the capsule directly. Passes on the plosives, no problems there. Hisses, eating salads with snakes and serpents sounds sexy and s I couldn't find a word. What? Caesar's salad, snakes, serpents, sounds, synapses, something. What? Passes on the hissing as well. There is some, but once you get this into an ideal position and a volume, you're going to um, see that a lot of that stuff gets reduced. When you mute your mic, the ring around the volume button turns red. And when you spin the dial all the way up, it'll spin infinitely, one of those. It'll let you know that it's at the max because the ring around the button flashes to let you know that it is maxed out. And just clicking the button once will switch it between monitoring levels and switching it again will switch it to gain levels. And of course, the RGB button on the back, you can click that and cycle through a number of colors. Let's go ahead and make a switch to the Mona software and see if it detects the PD200X. Let's switch. It has indeed detected my PD200X and that is actually a very high resolution, crisp image there on that software. So uh, I guess what we'll do is just click into it and we are in the Mona app. And if we go up to settings, let's uh, check for a firmware update for the PD200X. Firmware update is available for your device. So I guess this is probably one of the pluses with this software is that you can quickly and easily check for a firmware update. Let's do that now, why not? See how long this takes to update. Here we go, firmware is updating. Upgrade successful. Tips, that's a tip. I'm gonna give you a tip, successful upgrade, what? At any rate, let's look at what some of the things we can control with this. Obviously we can control game. We added 100% right now and you can see being about three inches away, this is the levels, which see, appear to be ideal, but it may still be loud. Uh, I'm dipping into the yellow, not necessarily touching the red. Monitoring on or off, we can turn that on or off as long as we're connected to our monitoring port on the headset. So right now we are in the original mode. So let's switch over to deep and see. Okay, adds a little bit of deepness to it, but it also kind of muff, muffles it just ever so slightly. That's original. And then we're gonna switch over to natural. Natural sounds not so bad, actually. A little more dynamic range. I feel like it's picking up a little bit more of my saliva in my neck, what? Okay, RGB on. We can just simply turn it off and the RGB turns off on the mic. Turn it on and it turns back on. Of course, brightness adjustment. So this is not even the brightest the mic lights can go. So this is something you can't control via the button on the microphone itself. You can kind of go through all these colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight standard colors plus the ninth, which is your RGB rotation color. Let's go over to advanced. And in advanced, there are some, some of the same features and some of the different ones. All of this right here in this top segment is all the same in the standard mode. But what we want to look at is the EQ modes here at the bottom right now, it is just kind of at a flat even mode here. And then here we'll switch over to high pass filter. It feels like it drops out some of the lows here and you're definitely getting those highs and equal is kind of just 
sounds a little flat high pass filter it's okay i'm missing some of that bass but if that's your flavor then that's your flavor right every ear is not built the same and then we have presence boost Ooh, presence boost sounds pretty good i like that it introduces the bass and amplify it's almost like adding a little bit of amplification to a little bit of everything actually the bass the mid-tones and it sounds very clear in my ears and then at the end you have hpf and presence boost so it's high pass filter plus present boost so you will get that presence boost but the high pass filter will mitigate some of your bass as you have here in your presence boost all right so I think Presence Boost is my favorite. Then you have something at the bottom, Limiter and Compressor. So let's add some of that. We'll make it even both about the same drop in level here. So you don't want to have too much compressor because then you'll overdo it. This is just to mitigate you from actually uh, breaking the mic. What? Now, I do like this sound right here, Tech Easy Gamer, just sounds pretty sweet. Now, um, the only gripe I had with this software is really that I felt that it didn't make too much of a difference for an already sounding, good sounding microphone. So the Mona itself sounds fantastic. This little tweak ever so slightly boosts the quality, but you, do you kind of want to run this every time? You want to run your microphone every time you want to game and podcast, you got to pull up the Mona link. The only other thing I didn't like was that switching from advanced to standard, right? You go back to standard, then you go back to advanced. Your limiter settings and everything are set back to the original. So you'd have to go back and remember the number that you set it to. So that's just one thing to worry about. All right, techers and gamers. So there is one more thing that I want to do with the Mono PD 200X, and that is test it via its XLR connection. That whole time was USB-C, but we have not put it through that awesome XLR port and the device I want to test the Mona PD200X is with the Mona C2 Neo. That is correct, Tech Easy Gamers. This device during the time of this recording is not even out yet to the market. So you're about to get a hands-on first look at the use of the Mona PD200X with the Mona C2 Neo. That's right, this is a nice, glossy, awesome uh, fingerprint magnet of a audio mixer. I have done a full review of this device. If you want, you can check the video at the end of this video. I would have posted it so that way you can see how this device actually works in full. But for today, we're just gonna connect it to our PC, power it on, like so. And we are ready to rock and roll, Tech Easy Gamers. Now let's get this connected to the XLR and let's see if the audio quality is any better than USB-C. All right, Tech Easy Gamers. So here we are with the Mono C2 Neo audio interface combined with the Mono PD200X dynamic microphone. And this is the audio quality combination coming out of box now with the XLR connection to the audio interface, you no longer have all of those filters going via the OBS uh, filters, for example, or the Mono PD 200X, uh, the Mono Link software. Right now, this is just straight up audio interface audio, and this is the quality. Have the gain up everywhere on every source, and this is the loudness of it, about, I don't know, six inches away or so. I can control the gain if it's too high, which it kind of does look high. I can bring it down just a little bit to about 95%. And right here, it seems like it's kind of ideal without creating any kind of too, too much distortion or loudness. Now I can mute that and go back to the USB-C quality so you can see what it sounds like. This is the USB-C audio going through the microphone into my PC and going back. This is the XLR audio now. There are some tweaks I can do to the audio interface by doing the tweaks in the OBS. So if I make the switch, I can actually click filters on the Neo interface, click add, and we can add a simple little noise suppression here by clicking that, click okay, no noise in the background. And this is 
XLR audio going into my interface with some noise suppression by OBS. Now, the interface itself has its own noise suppression. So, yep, noise suppression built into this. That's right. This little $60 interface has two levels of noise suppression, low and high. So let's take off the noise suppression from the actual OBS setting. And right now you're picking up some noise. But if we go over to noise suppression on the device itself and click that, this is low noise cancellation. What does this quality sound like, Techies and Gamers, with this audio interface? All right, Techies and Gamers, so what is my overall take on the Mona PD200X? Running with, first and foremost, with the XLR connection to the Mona C2 Neo is fantastic. These two are kind of a match made in heaven. So if you're going to have something like the Mona PD200X and you want to use XLR, why not go with the same manufacturer and use one of their interfaces? Now, this is just one of the smaller, lower and um, newer. That's right. This is more of a attainable device for gamers, streamers, podcasters out there. And if you want to get that, check the links in the description. But these two together are fantastic. And I would recommend using this with this. If you're just an entry level, I guess, content creator, you might want to just start yourself off here spending 60 bucks on this particular uh, mixer and about 50 to 60 bucks on this microphone as well. Overall, I think that the audio quality both through USB C and XLR are pretty great. Now, I think that for the time being, I may make the switch and switch out my uh, Fifine K688, right, for a little while and just run with the PD200X and kind of see how it goes with editing over my editing application and seeing if I actually have to, I don't know, do any post editing with the audio. If I do not, the way I do with the K688, I just straight up export the audio as is mostly, then this may be a mic that I might have to run with for a little while. The build quality is pretty good. I like the metallic build, has its own little shock mount to mitigate shaking of the microphone if it's on a table like this. I like the RGB, obviously. You can like that you can control it via a little button on the bottom and you can control it through the software as well. So, but I don't know if you kind of really need that software when you have an audio mixer like this if you're using an audio mixer i like it this passes on the tech toys and gaming show i like it so much that in my next video i will be using this that's right so uh get ready for some mona action going on my channel and interchangeably changing it between the five finds as well let me know if you want to see a battle techies and gamers between the five fine k688 and the Mona PD200X, we can make that happen and we can see who the true champion is here. Which one is the true quick grab in place because you know you can trust the audio quality. Anyway, that's my spell on this device. You want to check this device out. You got the links and descriptions down there. And if you're interested while you're down there, <laughs> click the subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content rolling up in your feeds, right? And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Later.